Beijing. This is Global Watch. Hello, it's noon in Beijing and 4 a.m. GMT. Welcome to Global Watch. Today we focus on the second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. But first, the headlines. In the keynote speech, Chinese President Xi Jinping has stressed five steps in his speech on how to further open up the country. He said China will strictly implement new foreign investment law to make it easier for capital to enter the Chinese market. He called for strengthened protections for intellectual property rights and technology transfers. Xi Jinping also vowed to eliminate non-tariff barriers to increase imports of foreign goods and services, noting that China has the world's fastest growing middle class of consumers. On finance and monetary issues, Xi Jinping said China will not manipulate the RMB exchange rates to get ahead of the competition. He said China wants to take part in reforming the World Trade Organization. The leader also said China will put into practice business agreements signed with other countries. Now, for more insight into those crucial remarks, we're joined in the studio by Professor Zhao Zhongxiu, President of the Shandong University of Finance and Economics, and Mr. Francesco Paolo Maringio, a China affairs expert from Italy. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Now, when we talk about the Belt and Road Initiative, I think we should bear in mind a simple logic or dialectics, if you may be, because the, uh, China's own development is conducive to better facilitation of BRI all around the world, and at the same time, a better global governance and development is also conducive to China's development. Now, having said that, let's look at those five major steps. Among them, uh, better implementation of the foreign investment law and protecting intellectual property rights. What's the key message here, Professor? Well, the key message from this is, uh, well, we create a more favorable, more equal in business environment for both the foreign investment in China. So that's the key to open the Chinese domestic market. And we, you know, protect the intellectual uh, properties, both for the uh, international company and also domestic company. So that we will foster competition and then increase efficiency and the take to, we are taking advantage of this uh, mega market. And then we integrate the Chinese domestic the market into the global market. So that's, that will be the win-win solution for all the business partners and the expansion of the global economy. Mm. Uh, what's your take on this, Mr. Marinje? Well, in 2018, we have celebrated the first 40 years of policing and opening up. In this stage, China has opened its economy in order to attract foreign direct investment. That was the first stage to start the development and industrialization of the countries. Now we are living a transitional phase with the new normal policy. So now the China economy is changing from massive production to quality production. That means that absolutely need new open policy in order to attract talents, in order to attract high level technologies and so on. So the measure that President Xi Jinping has announced in this these days and in the speech today are the way they drive to uh, create this new stage of opening uh, China policy. Mm. Now let's expand the scope a little bit. In the age of economic globalization, uh, countries are highly dependent on each other yeah. for economic development and prosperity. And President Xi Jinping has called for better global coordination on macroeconomic yeah. policies. Uh, now we know that your country, Italy, has just assigned an MOU with China yes. about an road initiative. Take that for an example. How can countries uh, better coordinate their policies under the BRI framework? <laughs> yeah. Uh, w one step backward. Uh, when President Xi Jinping went to Davos, make an important speech that in the West was, uh, and in the West the thinker were absolutely astonished about it because the President of China and the General Secretary of the Communist Party of China is talk to a globalization and more inclusive uh, uh, economy. The main point of this goal is that now the economy are really interacted one with the other. So we need to 
mm, drive uh, a global governance of what is happening. Otherwise, we are living a crossroads, a period uh, rich in prosperity and opportunities, but also a lot of risk. If we want to avoid the risk, if we want to leave the risk from the table, we need to implement these policies. And what I see from China in the last years is that it's creating many, many platforms for uh, global communication, not only in the high level from governmental point of view, but also including think tanks or scholars, many, many uh, multilateral platform. It's the way to avoid the risk of the beginning of trade wars or worst uh, any mm. kind of negative policies in the world. Uh, and in his keynote speech, Professor, President Xi Jinping uh, mentioned that the world is facing many challenges. Uh, what are the daunting challenges, common challenges for world economies? And do you think BRI is the answer to those challenges? Yes, definitely. The BI, uh, uh, BRI is the, uh, the answer for the two, for the the new ways of the uh, of the global you know de de development is especially for this uh, practical cooperation since now the the global economy now face the the pressure all the challenges for the uh, unilateralism mm. and uh, protectionism both mm. in the trade and the investment and, uh, and also this huge development gap right yeah exactly and the inequality mm. so that's we need to, you know, to work together to solve this problem not to you know they put one country the first and that at the cost of the others so that's we need to you know to avoid this the backs the neighbors policies and uh, but now we we really face this the challenge this threat so that's the better only initiatives and can bring together you know the different countries at the different development levels to work together as mentioned as mentioned by President Xi this the uh, you know a big family is not to create a small block and the uh, and uh, then take the advantage at, 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 at the cost of others right yeah. now gentlemen let's get more remarks from the president President Xi Jinping says uh, those measures to further open up China will be good for world peace stability and development. He's also calling for the fair treatment of Chinese enterprises, students and scholars overseas. We also hope countries in the world can create a favorable investment environment and equally treat Chinese enterprises, Chinese students and scholars overseas and supply a fair and friendly environment for them to normally conduct international communication and cooperation activities. Well, gentlemen, how important is this equal footing development? And uh, bear President Xi Jinping's remarks in mind, uh, is he talking about some countries in particular, Professor? Yeah, actually, we, we know, you know, in the area of uh, technology, you know, Chinese firms like Huawei, the Zhongxing, and others, you know, receive the discrimination and they are not allowed to participate in some, you know, van vendor uh, the well the bidding for the, the you know, for example five uh five G gener uh the the technology, you know, the network and also, you know, some you know, students are banned for to apply for some, you know, programs and uh, even, you know, the scholars in you know, social science the communities, they mm. are forced, you know, they they're they basically cancel. And, uh, out of no know, reason. Out of no reason. The reason. Yeah, yes, it's it's abnormal. It's 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 un unbelievable. Mm. It's, uh, so, so that's the real, you know, threat to the world order. So, you see, well, we need this fair, the fairness. We need this uh, you know, non-discrimination. Mm. We need this uh, people-to-people you know, exchange. And, yeah. uh, Mr. Marinjo, what's the common conception in the West, uh, according to your observation, towards Chinese technology, Chinese students, Chinese scholars, and how important? It's communication at all levels for countries to enhance their understanding. Yeah. Uh, I would like to make a comment on these uh, Huawei issues related to my country because right. we are living a, a really contradiction, incredible contradiction, because there is a part of the society that is absolutely against the use of Huawei technology to implement the 5G. But there are no other alternative in the market. There are no other 5G technologies that we can implement. So why we should stop now and don't do research together, we don't do further dialogue together in order that everyone can save its own point that are important, but together we can make a path together. Mm. So in order to move these uh, ideas that is rooted in uh, a sector of the society, I believe that this uh, continuous dialogue with 
scholars, with the think tanks, with the, the consultative uh, uh, meetings with political parties or government level will uh, uh, serve to solve this problem. That's the way. The dialogue is the way. Other way we will leave the critical times. Mm, communication is uh, crucial. Now yes. let's get more remarks from some other world leaders. And for more on that, let's cross live to my colleague Zhou Yun at Conference Hall. Over 30 heads of state and other government leaders attended the opening uh, ceremony, and some of them have delivered speeches as well. Zhou Yun, tell us uh, the main takeaway. Hello there, Pandan Wall heads of state and international organizations participating uh, at the opening ceremony of the forum voiced their welcome for China's Belt and Road Initiative as well as the new opening of policies and reforms that will be implemented by the country. While Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Russia is a firm supporter of the initiative and also because it incorporates the concepts of economy and humanity, it also matches Russia's efforts to establish an alliance in the Eurasian economy which he called this time the integration of integration. And he also believes the Building Road Initiative is beneficial and promising. Let's take a look. The overall initiative by Chinese president chimes well with the Russian idea of the and strategy of the Great Eurasian Partnership that specifically means integration of integrations, which is close synergy, synergies between bilateral and multilateral integration developments on the Eurasian continent. Russia is ready to do its best to provide for the transparent, comfortable environment propitious to cooperation and interaction on the Eurasian continent. It's important to come up with effect effective responses to fragmentation, possible fragmentation of global political, economic and technology space. Besides President Putin, there are also other world leaders expressed their support for this initiative. For instance, Egyptian President said that his country attaches high importance to the Belt and Road Initiative given the enhanced synergy between the projects under this initiative with the development of Egypt. And this, I think, echoes President Xi's speech that, you know, he mentioned the initiative is not an inclusive club for China, but delivers tangible benefits and win results to other countries as well. Uh, moreover, former President of Kazakhstan, Raised this new thinking, saying it has presented a new model of globalization with an eastern phase, and Kazakhstan is well prepared to participate. And finally, the 93-year-old Prime Minister of Malaysia said that he had advocated the revival of ancient Silk Road for a very long time and believed the Belt and Road will boost connectivity between China and Southeast Asia. So I think this kind of wisdom, prosperity, as well as innovation generated by the initiative is uh, believed and supported among various countries that will bring new impetus to the global growth. Back to the studio, Pan Deng. Thank you very much. Our reporter Zhou Yun at the National Convention Center in Beijing. Now, let's talk about this uh, gentleman. We know for more than a thousand years, the European continent and Asian continent uh, can be connected in real terms together again. Now, uh, Mr. Marinjo, let, let me raise uh, the example of Marco Polo. Uh, he traveled to China by sea. Now, if he live in modern times, at this present moment, he may travel to China by this Eurasian uh, rail link. And let's follow up on Russian President Vladimir Putin's proposal of a greater Eurasian partnership combined with Belt and Road Initiative. How promising is that? Recently, one former prime minister of Italy has said that the goal of the, um, our ruling class should be to include Russia in the West, in the West Bloc, in order to contain uh, the China, that he thinks and he believes that China is jeopardizing our democracy. Of course, I totally disagree with this point. And also, I believe that the uh, axis and the alliance among Russia and China is the condition for stability, not only for, um, for Eurasian continent, but also for Europe and the entire world. And we can see a fact, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization that included many countries, but is based on the China-Russia alliance, is a mechanism of uh, peace stability in the Eurasian continent. So. I strongly believe that these, those kinds of alliance will be important for the future, not only for Asian people or Eurasian people, but also for Europe. And still, 
Europe uh, uh, China dialogue through the Eurasian continent will be mm. uh, involved and will increase in relations. Mm. And talking about this Eurasian connectivity, Professor, it requires not only political trust but also uh, real things like infrastructure, better logistical facilitation. How's the Belt and Road Initiative doing so far in this particular regard? Well, the Belt and Road is the open well, platform and uh, well, the, the policy coordination is the base and then we share the same the goal for the for the pursue the development. So that's a very important. And then you have, based on this, you have, uh, you know, the different strategy talking. And on that, and then we can identify some priorities like, uh, you know, develop the infrastructure and, uh, and uh, promote the trade, you know, free trade and, uh, and then and, uh, seek the fund to finance this project, either from the government, the development fund, or from the uh, in the market, especially uh, in the market, that, that should be the place, the major role for the, for the, for that. So 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 that and uh, and also attract more and more people involved. So all the stakeholders of this. So this is uh, well, this is the five pillars for the better initiative. So this connected with well the for for for, for Russia, for example, they have uh, you know. Uh, Euro Asia Economic Union. So that's the, this is the two development agenda connected. So then mm. you can share the same ground. So that's the, well, that's the this the coordination. And uh, also for the BRI have the other you know connected with the uh, ASEANs with the, you know uh, Central East Europe, even Latin America. Mm. So that's the I, I mean this is the, the open and inclusive platform. Thank you very much, Professor Zhao Zhongxiu and Mr. Marine Zhou there. You're watching Global Watch on CGTN. We are focusing on the Belt and Road Initiative. Stay with us.